Today we're going to go ahead and continue with our code tracing activity and the program called Mantis. So the Mantis program again works with variables and understanding how those variables work and how they get called within conditional statements such as if, else if, or else statements. So just as we've done before, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that Mantis hex file in MakeCode. And then we're going to go ahead and open up that code tracing chart and see if we can figure out what is wrong with our actual program. So the first thing we're going to need to do is scroll down to the bottom of our Schoology page and down at the bottom, you will see that Mantis hex. Go ahead and download that hex file and then we're going to need to go ahead and import that into MakeCode. Now, once you've imported your code into the MakeCode environment, the first thing we really need to do is just observe what is going on. Now, since we're using an onshake event handler, nothing is going to be triggered until we actually shake the micro bit. Just by looking at that code, you can see that we have this on shake. Then there's a clear screen. We're setting a variable called X to pick a random number zero to five. From there, we have some conditional statements, such as if the variable X is equal to one of those conditions, then it looks like it should show that number. So it looks like it's pretty straightforward. For example, if the X is equal to five, we see five, X is equal to four, we see four, and so on. If X is not equal to either five, four, three, two, or one, then we should see the number zero on our screen. So if we go ahead and give that a shake, you can see here we see the number two. If we shake it again, we should see another random number up here. There's the five. And if we keep doing that, we should see random numbers popping up on the screen. Now it looks like our code is working based off of what is written, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's what the code is supposed to do. So we need to take a look at what our objective is and we can find that objective in that on shake event handler. So if we go ahead and open that up, what we're gonna see is here it's telling us that when the micro bit is shook, where the program randomly shows a number between one and six on the LED screen. So right off the bat, we can see that in that else statement, we're seeing the number zero. And that doesn't look like it should be any part of our code. So what we need to do is make sure we open up our code tracing chart, and then we're gonna go ahead and copy this objective. Once we copy that objective, we can go into that code tracing chart, and again down below where it says objective, we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. So we know that when the micro bit is shook, we should randomly see a number either one, two, three, four, five, or six. So now that we have our objective, we need to go ahead and see if we can figure out what the bugs are and what is actually going on. So with our on shake event handler, remember that the on shake is supposed to do something when a gesture is done, like shaking the micro bit. So your on shake is basically that trigger that initializes your program. So for my on shake, we're gonna go ahead and put in the outcome when the shake is performed, the program begins. And we've already seen that work. When we went ahead and clicked on the shake, it randomly showed us a number. So we know that that part of the code is working fine. The next part is this clear screen. So obviously what a clear screen should do is simply clear the LED screen, and this is kind of hard to see on your micro bit, but if we look carefully here, what we're gonna notice is that when we select that on shake, we see a number. And when we select it again, it shows another number. Now in between those two numbers, it should be going ahead and clearing that screen. If we slow that program down by going to that debugger window, and then we select the slow-mo, what we should see is that number actually be cleared and nothing on the LED screen before a new number is selected. So here when we select on shake, it picks that random number, checks the conditions, shows the number, and then when I shake it again, the first thing it should do is clear that screen before assigning a new variable. So if we go ahead and click on that on shake, you can see that it's now cleared, runs through, selects the condition that is met, and there we go. So right off the bat, we can see that that clear screen is working, even though it is a little hard to see when we perform this in real time. The next thing is our variable X. So here we're setting X to pick a random number zero to five. If we look at our actual comment here, what it's telling us is that it's setting the value of X to a random number to either zero, one, two, three, four, or five. 
So it is picking a random number of zero to five. And remember, this is just a number that's being assigned to the variable. So in this case, we are getting this to work correctly. Because set is being, because X is being set to pick the random number of zero, one, two, three, four, five. So even though we don't have the number six in here, remember the number zero is still a number and that will come into play a little bit later on. So in my code tracing chart, we are setting the value of the random number zero, one, two, three, four, five. And that is actually working correctly as well. Here we get into our conditions. So in my conditions, if we check X is equal to the number five, show the number five. If X is equal to the number four, we should show the number four. If X is equal to the number three, we should see the number three on the LED screen. Two is showing two and one is showing the number one. So we can see that if we are picking that random number, all of those conditions should be met. So we don't have any bugs in our program as of yet. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that in there and we can paste a couple of these in here. If X is equal to five, show the number five on the LED screen, that will work. Okay, this one's gonna be the number four. So we'll wanna show the number four on the LED screen. And again, that would work. The next one is X is equal to three. Again, that works and so on and so forth. So here we have the number two. And then we'll need to go ahead and change the last one to number one. And all of those code work right off the bat. So our bug, if there is one, must be located somewhere in that else statement. So let's go ahead and see what happens with my else statement. When we check that comment here, what we are having is if X equals zero, show the number six on the LED screen. So what's happening here is if X is set to one, two, three, four, or five, we should be seeing those numbers appear. However, if for some reason it randomly selects the number zero, instead of showing the number zero on the LED screen, we want to be showing the number six. So we need to change that show number zero to the number six. That should identify our bug and it should also correct our problem. So here we have our first bug in the program, which is when the number zero is selected, it shows a zero instead of six. So we only have one basic bug and it's all about understanding what that variable is doing. Now we need to go ahead and add the corrected program into our actual code tracing chart here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is remember on your Chromebooks, if you are using one, you can simply go ahead and right click in the blank space and go ahead and select snapshot. When you select snapshot in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you are gonna see where it'll say copy to clipboard. Go and select copy to clipboard. And then in your code tracing chart, you could just simply go ahead and use the control V feature to go ahead and paste that in. So here you can see we have a comparison between our buggy program as well as our corrected program. And the only modification we had to make was changing our else statement from showing the number zero to now showing the number six.